If you're watching this video, you're probably wondering, what is Webster Lab Webs and what is FTP? Let's talk about that. This process is often difficult for students, but sit back and I assure you, after you watch this video, you'll have everything that you need and everything that you need to know so that you can get your site on Webster Lab Webs. In this video, we're going to address these questions. What is Webster Lab Webs? How do I access Lab Webs? How do I put my site on Lab Webs? What is FTP and how do I FTP? What is Webster Lab Webs? Well, Webster Lab Webs is basically a server that Webster owns that they allow students to put their websites on. It really is just that. It's just a server that Webster owns that they let students of Webster put their websites on. How do you access Lab Webs? Well, that's a little bit more complex. Um, I have some tutorial files within the course that talk to you specifically, give you specific steps on how to access Lab Webs but I can also show you how to do it right here. Okay, so here's where we are in the course, and what we need to do is we need to log into LabWeb, specifically your directory on LabWeb, so that's why I couldn't put the link here. So we're gonna go to labwebs.webster.edu forward slash your username. Now I've capitalized your username for a reason, that's because you need to put your username there. I've had many students come back to me and say, I put in your username for the for slash your username, it doesn't take me anywhere. Well, let me show you. So labwebs, L-A-B-W, labwebs.webster.edu forward slash your username. My username is David Hallman 33 You'll notice on the instructions, I put spongebob99. Your username is, I don't know, well, it's your username, so it's, it's your name, and then it'll have, most likely, depending on how new of a Webster student you are, you'll also have three digits, or two digits, I'm sorry. And then as soon as you hit enter, you're then prompted to enter in your username and password. This also gets students confused. Well, what's my username? Well, your username is what you put up here. So you put in David Hallman. 33. Now, if you put in David Hallman 33, you won't know this next step, which is your password. That is then your ID number. So, so that is your three, your two numbers here is part of your ID number. But so, if you have questions about this, like, hey, what's my username? What's my password? Contact me. There has been occasions where um, tech support, not tech support, IT hasn't have doesn't have your account set up yet depending on when you enrolled in the class so if for some reason that's the case for you please let me know only problem is it'll take a day or two turnaround to be able to get you to have an account with labs to, to with lab webs but generally speaking as soon as you enroll into a co-op class this should be set up for you so again labwebs.webster.edu forward slash your username and then you're going to be entering in you're then prompted to authenticate so you're putting in your username again and then your ID number and you hit OK. And this is what you're going to get for the very first time. So basically all you have is your empty directory within LabWebs. So basically the server that's going to host our site is labwebs.webster.edu and then this is your personal directory. In my case it was David Hallman 33. Put that back up here. So this is my own personal directory to LabWebs. And then what we need to do is, because I'm guessing you're going to be taking multiple classes in Co-op, you're going to need to add one more directory here. Uh, the directory will just be Co-op 2000. So basically, all your term project site or anything else that you put in here, for example, your final exam will need to be put into LabWebs. So you're, you'll be eventually sending us a URL and it will be labwebs.webster.edu forward slash your username forward slash coap2000 which I could go ahead and do that now coap2000 and then a forward slash if I go there you know I get page not found but eventually I'm going to be showing you here in just a second how we add this extra directory and then you're going to make a directory for your term project and then eventually when we get close to the end of the class you're going to be making a directory for your final exam so how do we get our files on LabWebs? Let's talk about that. So what you're realizing is you have files on your computer and you need to figure out how to get them on Webster LabWebs. Um, to do that, we're going to use a process called FTP. 
and you'll notice here these two red lines, they represent the internet. So FTP is essentially what's going to allow us to get our files from our computer up to the internet and onto Webster Lab Webs. So now you're thinking, what in the world is FTP? Like I was saying previously, it's just the ability to get your files from your computer onto the web server uh, across this internet superhighway, which is essentially these two red lines. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol, and it's basically just a way to take um, copies of your files from your computer and store them on the web server so that other people can view them on the internet. Forgive me for being a little ambiguous as I've been talking about your computer, but what I mean is that local root folder that you've been creating your site in. So you've off, you, maybe you've heard me call it um, local server, local host, uh, because essentially that, you know, that folder is currently being hosted on your computer, which essentially is a server. A server is really just a computer. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take just that, just that root folder, just that local host, that local root folder, and take that specific folder and package it and use the file transfer protocol to get it on the web server. To do that, we're going to be using an FTP program called WSFTP. And uh, within the course, I'm going to provide you a link to a website where you can go and access WSFTP 6, as well as the, uh, the executable file within the course that you could download straight from me from the course um, to install WSFTP on your computer. Uh, we do use WSFTP 6. Um, feel free, though, to explore using other file transfer pro protocol programs, FTP programs. Um, just doing a simple search out there, you can find all sorts of them. The problem with that is that often some of those programs might come packaged with things that will add junk to your browser or perhaps viruses to your computer. And um, the department feels that WSFTP 6, while it is an older FTP program, um, we know how it's, we've developed uh, materials to show you how to specifically use it. And we feel that it's rather easy for you know new um, HTML, XHTML, CSS students to be able to uh, use. So that's why we've chosen WSFTP 6. But if you have another FTP program that you'd like to try and use, feel free. I'll show you how to get WSFTP onto your computer here in just a second. But one thing, the thing that I really need to hit home for you is that all we're doing is we're just taking a copy of your local root folder and putting it onto the web server. Because students often forget that um, that's what we're doing is we're just taking a copy of the original that's on your computer and putting it onto the web server. So as you make changes to your site, for example, like um, this week or perhaps next, you're going to be uploading uh, just a draft of your site to the to Webster Lab Webs. And so that's just a copy of your site. And then over the next week, you might make changes to your site. And then you'll need to then FTP those changes that you've made or essentially you could FTP the whole site again up to Webster Lab Webs and then we'll just get another copy. So users cannot, users of the web cannot see your C drive. Um, your local root folder is stored on your computer, um, your C drive, and users that use a browser on the web, they cannot browse to your C drive. So if you find links in your code that say C, users, Dave, sites, yada yada yada, um, users on the web are not going to be able to see that because that link is just a reference to a file in your HTML code. For example, like an image. Uh, within your HTML file, you have a link that tells the browser where that image is. So all the HTML do is doing is essentially giving uh, the browser kind of like a window to see that file. Uh, because when you have, let's say you have a web page that has two images, essentially when the browser is navigating to that, the browser is viewing three different files. It's viewing the HTML file, then it's also viewing each of the images. All the HTML file is doing is just kind of giving um, the browser a window to view those specific images. So when you put your files up on LabWeb, sometimes you, students will say, well, I can't see my images. Well, one, I would say, did you make sure that all of your images are within your root folder that you FTP'd up to Webster LabWebs? And two, you then you need to also make sure to check the code and make sure that code is not navigating uh, the browser to view files on the C drive that users on the internet cannot see. So now that you know about the differences between what's on your computer and what's on the web server, what's on the web server is just a copy of the original files that are on your local root folder and the goal of FTP is to take your local root folder and use some sort of a protocol to get it 
up onto the web server, or in our case, Webster Lab Webs, and then users on the internet use a browser to, uh, which will render your code, your HTML, uh, your other files like images and, and other things to, to make them essentially viewable on the internet. And the users on the internet cannot use browsers to view files on your computer. So that's a mouthful. Now that we got all of that out of the way, we can actually go through how to use FTP and WSFTP6. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download WSFTP6, specifically WSFTPLE6. So if you click on this link here, now often this link does change, so but currently it's working. So I'm going to click on this link and it's going to take me to oldversion.com. That's where you can download this. Uh, LE stands for Limited Edition WSFTP6. Now you could click this Download Now link. Um, I do want to warn you though, there's lots of other junk on this site that you do not want to click on. Like, for example, like when I hovered over this, you notice how I get that little Add Choices thing? And some of this other stuff over here is, uh, I've seen it even worse. Maybe they're cleaning their act up a little bit, but there's other stuff in here that you do not want to click. Like, I believe, like when we click here, this download now, we're then taken to this page, and I believe I've seen other junk on here that you do not want, like downloading Chrome. So this is actually telling me, hey, you can download WSFTP6 uh, right here, which is, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the safe route and I'm going to download it from within the course. But I have seen other junk here that you do not want to click on. Um, for example, maybe even this banner up here could be could be virus type stuff. And I, I'm personally, you know, I'm, I'm really um, rigorous in making sure that I'm not downloading stuff that I shouldn't be downloading because I, for one, it's my work computer. Uh, for two, you know, I just don't want to have um, problems happen with my browser. I don't want to have extra toolbars installed that I don't need. I don't want to have viruses. I'm sure you're the same way. So just to be safe, for those of you who do feel like you, you know, trust me, you can also download WSFTP6, the executable file, right here within the course. I've uploaded it into the course. So just in case you're uncomfortable going to old version right here, you can go to WSFTP. Uh, you can just go here to this executable file. So we'll just click here. And you're going to get the exact same file that you saw from the site a minute ago. And you're going to click Save. Uh, it's a small file, so it didn't take me long to actually download it. So now I'm going to go to my Downloads folder. And here it is. So what I'm going to then do is I'm going to walk you through how to install this program. So now what we need to do is we need to install the program. So I'm going to double click on the program. And they get this dialog box that says, you know, do you want this following unknown, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we do know who the publisher is. Yes, uh, it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Again, I'm on Windows 7. Some of you might be using XP, maybe Vista. Maybe some of you are on a Mac. If you're on a Mac, one, you need to understand that you're not going to be able to download WSFTP. I have other resources, uh, a list of other suggested uh, sites that you can go to to download your uh, FTP program. Um, uh, they're, they're free, just as, just as the same, same as this. But the steps will be a little bit different. Uh, to download that, um, but one thing that will be common is the information that you'll have to put into it to use the FTP program that will be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes, and then it's going to give me this uh, box telling me that it is installing. Um, takes a second. And then I read this information, I click next, I read the user agreement, I've read all of this information, I then click I accept and click next and now it's telling me where it wants to save the program and this is okay for it to be saved right here I'm gonna hit next it tells me the folder that's going to save it in. it's gonna save it in my accessories area uh, within my taskbar I'm gonna hit next and then to begin the installation go ahead and hit install it's gonna take just a little bit to install the program then I hit finish and now it should be installed so what I can do is I can navigate I can close my downloads folder and I can navigate to accessories and I believe it should be uh, where is it
Oh, it didn't put it in my accessories folder. It went ahead and just gave it its own folder, which is great. And I'm going to click the icon. So this is what the icon looks like. And now it's open. So now you're ready to connect uh, to your lab webs. So what we can do is we can go ahead to set that up. So basically what you want to do is you want to connect lab webs to the spot on your computer that has your, um, the, the, to your root folder. So for your profile name, you can write lab webs. For your host name address, that is labwebs.webster.edu. Your uh, host type, you can leave that as automatic direct. For your user ID, you can go ahead and put in your user ID. User ID. Then you need to enter in your password, and your password is your ID number. We've already discussed that. And then hit OK. So as soon as you click that, you're going to hear that crazy train wreck sound if your speakers are on. But that just lets you know that you have connected to lab web. So now what we need to do is, because uh, it lets you know that you connected to lab because you'll see this says remote site here, local system here. So remote site here says David Holman 33, and it tells me those items that I had in my directory earlier. Remember I had this private folder that didn't essentially have anything in it. If you go in there, it's empty. You can click this little button right here and it takes you back. Uh, account test, that's something that I guess they put in to check to make sure that your uh, directory can hold information. And then here's your local system. So what we need to do is we need to navigate to um, where we have our files on the local system that we want to upload into lab webs. And what you'll see here is that your local system is already being mapped to C colon uh, backslash Windows System 32. Um, the next part is probably one of the most difficult part. It's just getting um, WSFTP synced up to where you have your root files. But basically, you need to be able to put in the path right here to your root directory. The easiest way to do that, I mean, if you know how to navigate through it using this information here, uh, that's fine. I mean, you could just keep backing up until you get to something that says users. At least that's what I can do is I can come into users and I can find me and I can get to where I'm trying to, to go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that just by going to where I have the folder stored. So what we're going to want to have is we're going to want to have a directory. This is my folder. We're going to want to have a directory called coapp2000. And then within that directory, you're going to have your, um, your term project site. Um, so for my case, uh, I'm just going to show you how to upload the HIO folder that we, I've been using for some of my other examples. So the easiest way to figure out where that, the, what, where that is actually on my computer is you can go to your index page and you can view it in the browser. And then this is that, this is that path that we need for WSFTP. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to bring up WSFTP. I'm going to paste it here. But I don't want it to go I want it just to go to the Coop 2000 directory because I wanted to put, push up all of that. And I'm going to hit delete. Because I wanted to push up everything. And as soon as I hit enter, I'm then mapped to my C users, David Hallman, desktop, Coop 2000. But what I want to do is I want to take this whole Coop 2000 folder and I want to send it to LabWeb. So I'm just going to back up one. So all I did was I double clicked on the green arrow and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Coop 2000. Once it's selected, I can then hit this button right here and it's going to send it over here to LabWebs. And as soon as it gives me, as soon as I click that button, it says, do you want to transfer the selected folders and their contents? And I'm going to hit yes. It takes this couple seconds and it is currently transferring all the files. And now I'm noticing that it's getting everything transferred. So now it shows me my remote site, David Holman 33. Remember, here's that private folder. We don't need to do anything with that. But I now have a folder in there called Co-op 2000. So I can go in there and I have my HIO folder. And there's all of my HIO. So the, imagine that would be like my term project site, or in your case, it would be your term project website. So now what we can do is we can go to LabWebs. 
and I'm going to, this is what my page looked like previously, now I'm going to refresh my page. And as soon as I refresh it, it then gives me this new directory. So now I can go into my 2000 directory. I can then go into my HIO directory. And then the first page that is automatically will show is my index page. So for example, here is my page, my original page on HIO, C, users, yada, yada, yada. But now here's my page on the internet, labwebs.webster.edu forward slash David Holman 33 co-op 2000 forward slash high. And you're probably wondering, well, why doesn't that say index.html? Well, you can put that, but as long as you label your uh, your home page as either home.html or index.html, I would suggest labeling it index.html because that is the most commonly used for browsers. But what that'll do is that you, browsers know to automatically direct users to that page. So I can just go ahead and put index.html and hit enter and it, it's the same page or I could take it off and hit enter and it's the same page but now essentially I have my website that we've been seeing me as kind of build a simple website on the internet and remember this is a copy of the file so if I go and I start if I open up notepad plus uh, plus and I'm uh, up editing the the notepad plus uh, plus files that are on my C drive I then need to remember, so let's say I've edited a few files, I need to remember to bring back WSFTP and then I can go into my folder and then I can just upload the folders, the pages that I've made changes to. So if I made changes to the contact page, I can select the contact page and hit, um, and hit uh, this button right here that will then upload it to the server and then copy the, and then it's going to give you, it says the new version of contact HTML exists on the destination folder, copy the file anyway, just go ahead and hit yes and then we'll copy a new version of that file over. Let's say you make changes to your index page. You could then, uh, if you double click, if you double click, it'll push it also, but you could select it. You could also select multiple files by uh, selecting one file and coming up and holding down the shift button and then press the mouse key. And then you, so let's say I wanted to upload all of those files because I've made changes to my whole site. Or maybe you've made changes to your whole site. You can also just back up and just upload your entire HIO folder and just hit upload. And it says, do you want to transfer the entire folder and its contents? Just hit yes. And then all it's doing is that's re-uploading uh, my HIO folder with the changes that I might have made. And then as soon as it's done, we're going to hear uh, some noises. And that just lets you know that you have all of the, the newer copies uploaded into the server. So again, that is... Uh, how to use WSFTP. So again, let's go over this. Labwebs.webster.edu forward slash your username forward slash coop2000 and then your directory for your term project would be like the name of your site. So um, maybe that is uh, Christmas Carol or, or whatever your term project is about. In my case, HIO. And then uh, it'll then automatically redirect to your index page, so index.html. Um, within the course, I have various tutorials that walk you through everything that we just went over in this in this uh, video. So for example, you could click on this downloading and installing uh, WSFTP. This is a tutorial that I developed that will take you to download uh, oldversion.com to download WSFTP and install it. And then you can also come to this LabWebs uh, server. And this is a, f a file that was uh, created by someone within my department. And this file will talk, walk you through everything that we just went through on how to install, um, to how to utilize your FTP program um, and updating your term project, stuff like that. So, for example, labos.webster.edu forward slash your username, forward slash coop2000, and then the name of your term project. Um, let the class or I know if you have any questions. And uh, because this is, often a this is often a difficult thing that students have in the, to do in the class, um, but the class and I are always here to help. Have a good day.